Welcome back everybody to another episode of Joy's Garage. As my weekend quickly passes away, I'm going to try and get a little bit of work done on my scooter. Yesterday I did work on the um, motorcycle and that one's moving along really good. But today I need to work on my scooter. Specifically, I need to tune it for summertime. Since um, if you remember my winterizing um, episode, I did it and I made it a little bit richer since the air was a little bit thicker. So we need to even out that um, the ratio. But now, since summertime has approached, the air is a little bit thinner, so you need to lean it out a little bit so it actually evens out again. And I'll show you that as we go through it. Now, just as a warning, I do have a wideband sensor, and I will use that when I'm tuning it. That makes it a lot easier. That was one of the, actually the first modifications I made to my scooter since I figured I wanted to protect the engine and just make tuning a little bit easier. So what I got was this innovative technology, or innovate technology, it was a very easy setup and very easy installation. It just comes with the gauge that it's going to display what the air fuel ratio is. And it came with the sensor, a Bausch, Bausch sensor. Anybody's interested? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's upside down. There you go. That's the one it is. It was very easy installation. All you have to do is um, put in the bung on the exhaust and then just install the gauge on the actual display of where you want it. Power it up with a 12 volt um, key on and that's it. You have a white band sensor, like I said, about 130 bucks, 140 bucks off of Amazon. That was the best investment I made so far on this scooter. So let's go ahead, go through the steps, and I'll show you exactly how you need to tune your carburetor to get it back up to the summertime. So let's go ahead, let's go work on it. So if you do want to install a white band sensor, the first thing you need to do is decide where you want to put it. For me, I decided to put it just mount it right here because it's going to be a permanent fixture. Some people like to mount it on a bracket so they can take it off, but I just decided to use a drill saw and just mount it right there. And then if you come around to the other side, right in there you can see the other end of it. And it was very easy and there was nothing right in the way, so I just put it right there. And then from there, it just has the uh, wires and I found this one right here this is usually where the um, a key fob goes for an alarm and I just used this uh, plug and found the AC on or DC on I should say so DC on with the key so just from there I just plugged it in and it also needed a ground right there and if you remember my electrical one here's that black wire that I added to it this is the extra ground that I mounted to the frame just because I have other electronics in there other than that, I just have the um, actual um, sensor cable that runs to the sensor that hooks into the exhaust and that just runs down through the frame and it keeps running, keeps running, keeps running comes out here which would be one of these here it is, this is going to be the cable keeps running, keeps running and it runs out here where the sensor is right here and then just from there it plugs right into the bung right here for the exhaust. So the exhaust runs out. It would be able to pick up what exactly the exhaust is like. Runs out and then runs into my aftermarket muffler. And that's it. It's a very easy installation. I highly recommend it. It, it, it makes tuning so easy and it also makes you be able to see exactly what the motor is doing. So I highly recommend putting in a wideband sensor. So from there, let's go ahead and get started with the tuning. So, to start the tuning process, the first thing I need to do is I need to take off my um, air filter, which I just have a foam one, and I'm going to clean it out. And I do that once a year just to make sure it's clean. I don't go through too many dirty places. I just ride, um, it's about three miles to work every day, and then three miles back, it's on roads. It's nothing dirty. So, I just clean it out once a year, just take it off. And I'll put it up to a shop vac and I'll just clean off any dirt or dust, anything like that. And then from there, I'll also make sure my sensor is calibr calibrated, which I have right over there. I removed it from the exhaust bung. And I'll just go through the steps that are listed by the manufacturer and just make sure it's or calibrated. And all that's doing is just you put it into the air and that you run the um, calibration settings. And it'll make sure that the air is, um, you know, the 22.4 is what the reading is. And it'll make sure it's at 22.4, and then you'll be able to get an exact reading. So, just from there, as I said, take off that, take off that, calibrate, 
and I will be ready to start running. Alright, so I have the air filter installed and then I cleaned out also and I also have the wide band sensor that attaches to the exhaust that's been calibrated. So the next step that um, we need to take before we take this out is to notice where the throttle position is. I have it already marked off on mine and I'll put it in the description to the um, video. A very good guide if you don't have a wide band sensor but with me that's what I'm going to be tuning mine by. So if you don't have one and if you do and you're tuning your carburetor the first thing you need to notice is exactly where the throttle position at. I have it already marked off on mine. If you look over here I have it set up so I have it as uh, zero throttle, fourth, half, or uh, yes, zero, quarter, half, three-fourths, and full. And so I'll know exactly where it's at when I'm um, tuning it. So with that, I'll be able to know exactly where I'm at with it. So the first step I'm going to take is I'm going to tune for the wide or for the uh, main jet. And if you've watched my video before, you already know exactly what it needs to be at since I tuned it for the winter when it was summer or at the end of summer for winter. But you already know, so I'm going to do it as if I don't know. I already know, but I'm going to still go through the step by step for you. So the first thing I'm going to do, as I said, is do the main jet. I'm going to go out to that abandoned strip that I used before and I'm going to tune it for the main jet. And that's going to be at 100% throttle. And that way I can go from there. I know my 100% is good. And then I'm going to step it down to the one half and um, one quarter. And then I'll be able to know where I set my idle mixtures and also where I set my needle. So right now, let's go ahead. I'll put in the, the scooter back up. And let's go ahead and take it out and see exactly what we're reading on the white band sensor. All right. So I took her out to that quarter uh, mile stretch of road that I use when the carburetor testing also. And it's barely used but I like it so I can go you know really fast and it's a straight run. And it's easier to record and all that kind of stuff because I'm trying to hold it with one hand. I'm looking at the road. It gets a little dicey and sketchy at times. But anyways, so I got at the full open throttle. It was running at about 12, low 12s to upper 11s I would say. Half throttle was 12.5 ish. And then quarter throttle was still about the same, the 12.5, 12.8. So that's close, but that's what I was expecting. Because I richened it up for the winter time when that denser air, but now I'm going to lean it out. So I'm looking for 13.5, 13 even at full open throttle would be really good. Um, 13 is about good, 13.5 for idle. And then into the 14s, that's going to be running a little bit rich or a little bit lean for me. Uh, some people run that if you want a little bit faster, but you're running lean instead of kind of in that little even middle. So I like to run it at about 13.5. That's safe for me. I'd rather have a safer engine, nice and cool, than have it running a little bit rich or a little bit lean. I like that perfect little middle. So from here, all I have to do is take out the carburetor, which is going to be a pain in the butt. I'm going to switch the um, main jet, and then I'll fire up again, and I'll adjust the um, fuel mixture screw. So... From here, let's just toss out the carburetor. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. We've done that a million times. There's other videos of it. So I'm just going to pull it out real quick. It's a pain in the butt. I hate draining it. I hate pulling it out. Taking it apart. Take out the jets. Put it back together. It's a pain in the butt. So I'm going to go through it as quick as possible and get back to it and do another test again. So stand by. We'll do a quick uh, little montage, I guess, of me taking it out. And let's get it back in there and test it again. Montage. So I got that main jet switched out. As you saw, it's not very hard. It took about 10 minutes altogether. I mean, it's not too difficult. It's just a pain in the butt with removing the hoses, draining it out, 
putting in the new jet, this and that. So I got that all good to go. I switched out the 110 for the 108, so now I'll get a little bit less fuel when I'm at wide open throttle. And from here, I'll just fire her up, have it idle, get that auto richer off, and then adjust the idle mixture screw and idle speed screw so I can have my mixture at 13.5 at idle and also have my RPMs around 1,800. And from there, I should be good to go. Take it for another drive and see where we're at. To richen or lean the air to fuel ratio mixture once the main jet, slow jet, and needle are dialed in. The idle mixture screw should be tuned clockwise for leaner and counterclockwise for richer. These adjustments should be done at a slow pace to allow for new and accurate readings. So now that I'm back from my second run, you can see that um, adjusting the carburetor the main jet is making a hell of a difference. At the quarter throttle, I'm about at the 12.8 I believe it was. The half throttle is still re remained around there up to 13, 13.2. And at the full throttle, I was still in the 13th, so I'm very happy with those results. If you watched my um, previous episode, the winterizing carburetor, you would have known that I also raised the needle so I could be running richer at the half throttle and quarter throttle. With this one, I didn't have to do it because I actually raised that before, kind of in the springtime area. Because when I winterized the carburetor, it was in the 40s to 50s range of uh, temperature. And then once it got around springtime into the 50s, 60s, I raised the needle on the carburetor just so I can get a little bit leaner, but not too much since it was still a little bit cold and the tempers were fluctuating. But now I'm back into the summertime. I'm sweating my butt off in the garage and I need to get it all the way back to how it was. So hopefully this helps somebody out. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, can't push this enough. The Innovative Motorsport, I believe it is. Yeah. Awesome product, highly recommend it. Like I said, only about 130, 150 bucks, and it's going to be well worth it. It's going to save you a lot of trouble when you're tuning your carburetor for winter, for summer, any type of fluctuation change in the weather. You're going to see a difference in how you're the scooter, how the ATV, how anything that is carburetor runs. So, highly recommend it. With that, I hope everybody liked it. Subscribe, um, comment, all that other blah 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 crap. I hope you like the channel. Um, you know, keep watching and stay safe and to keep and keep two wheels on the road.